Hi, and welcome everybody to the Winner's Circle Sports Betting Channel. My name is Ross Benjamin. I'm your host, and like every Wednesday morning, it is a Wednesday morning, January 10th. I am joined by my two trusted colleagues, uh, Mr. Sean Higgs and Mr. Jesse Shule, all three of us of our sponsor site, which is gamblersworld.net, where you'll find 10 of the finest handicappers in the country, including us three. Right now, folks, you don't want to miss this. We, uh, the NFL playoffs are coming up on Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. And we have a special going on at gamblersworld.net right now. $199 will get you the entire postseason in the NFL uh, playoffs right through the Super Bowl for just $199. And, folks, it's there where we guarantee our selection. So if you don't win, you don't make a profit. You don't get a refund. Now, we had a question come in yesterday on uh, our customer support email. You don't get a refund, folks. We credit your account, and you could use that money any which way you like at any time you wish on any one you want to uh, uh, invest in. And there's plenty of options there, guys with proven track records, include, including us three. But without further ado, Jesse, what's going on, my man? Bit of a rough day for me yesterday, Ross. Uh, gave out a, a loser on the show, and I never like to do that was one and one with my premium picks with college basketball. So uh, it could be worse, but uh, I, I went to the gym for an hour today. I grilled steaks and had some uh, twice baked potatoes, a bottle of Cabernet Sauvignon about an hour ago. So I'm uh, on the coffee here trying to sober up for the show. <laughs> Always nice when uh, one of your handicappers has got a bottle of wine in them and he's going to make a pick. So anyway, you never know. Maybe that will improve the process today. Uh, anyway, Sean, how are you, man? I'm not too bad. I go, uh, I hit, I hit a game on the ice yesterday, so that's pretty nice. But I go four and five in college hoops yesterday. So, um, uh, what am I gonna do? It's one of those days. Well, I think I'm one fifty six and one sixty one on here, so I got a little work to do here to make up some money. But you know, I have some games today. I think we had a winner yesterday on the the video. We did all right on here. So, uh, one day at a time. You know, but we got yeah, NFL um, playoffs this weekend, man. I'm excited about the playoffs. You had, you had the un, over 154, was it, in the Baylor game? Yeah, BYU Baylor. Yeah, it went under, Sean. So it, it went fell on. One. Oh, all right. Oh, you know what? I'm sorry. I, yeah, I, was, lose I was thinking the Nebraska. Liked, I was just saying the Nebraska game I liked with you, and I think we were opposite of we Jesse. Both, uh, uh, liked <laughs> Iowa State. Yes, Jesse, like that's because right, I had Iowa State. That's why I was thinking I had that for I had them for myself. Yeah, no, I hear you. I'm, I hear you. But I just don't want to misinform the audience. No, and, yeah, I know. Please, they'll get us everything. You know, geez, you yeah. Miss, you so, must speak when there's we give out. You know, there's three games total we give out, and and I you remember each one you give out to each for all three of us. So it's sorry, yeah. folks. Jeez, Louise, take yeah. it easy on that. Nah, it's all good, John. <laughs> it's all good, my friend. Um, just make sure and, you say uh, the names right. We don't, exactly. don't want to pronounce team names. That'll be the really downfall of the channel. Yeah. Well, I got one of those today that uh, I've been picked <laughs> apart on in the past. Uh, but uh, Jesse's going to be looking at Tennessee and Mississippi State. Um, I will be looking at UConn and Xavier. Not Xavier, Xavier. And uh, Sean will be looking at Kansas and Central Florida, a game that we played at Central Florida. Uh, some pretty good matchups there. But before we get to that, again, folks, don't forget, if you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, please take a second and do so. You'll see a black subscribe button right underneath you. Just click on that. It's absolutely free to do so. There's no strings attached. There's no hidden agenda. 100% free for the best sports betting podcast in this format on the Internet anywhere. And I say that with the utmost confidence. And, of course, I am biased. Uh, but by the same token, um, if you're on your PC, you'll see a WC logo right underneath. In the bottom right-hand corner of your screen, just click on that. That'll get you subscribed absolutely free. And if you're a uh, past subscriber, in which uh, we deeply appreciate all your support you've given us and you being a subscriber, and if you're new, uh, take, take an extra step here and go into your YouTube settings and click on the alert notification bell for the Winter Circle Sports betting channel and you'll be notified upon any of our six weekly podcasts going up on our great channel all right let's get right to the meat and potatoes sean kansas um 
on the road at UCF and laying a heavy number here, seven and a half, 144 and a half. Uh, game will be televised on ESPN Plus, and I'm glad I got ESPN Plus. Folks, if you're a college basketball fan, I highly recommend uh, spending a little money and getting ESPN Plus. It's uh, it's a m- nominal um, monthly fee. So anyway, Sean, now that I've uh, given ESPN a plug, uh, who bigger than ESPN than Mr. Higgs? I, uh, I enjoy the ESPN Plus because it also comes with Disney Plus and Hulu. And I enjoy watching Burn Notice. I'll give a shout out to Burn Notice. And of course, the Star Wars. Only the first three Star Wars is and Rogue One. Everything else is garbage. Anyway, that's my. Yeah, that's well, my, uh, yeah, I mean, you got, yeah, that's the problem. You got to be in touch with reality, man. You're watching too many of these sci fi movies. And, and Star- Listen. All right. If you don't like Star, I mean, it's Star Wars. And it's original Star Wars. It's not not the garbage remake or the oh, they're okay. not remakes. It's just terrible. Kirk and Spock and all. There we go. Guys. Oh, you're a Trek guy. See, listen, yeah. you're automatic. Well, I, can't Beth, talk to you. I like the original. Seth, I, I put Ross on mute for the rest of the show. He's the guy's a Trekkie. The guy's a, obviously a psychopath. He can't talk to me. <laughs> all right. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, Star Trek. Not a Star Trek guy. Anyway, let's jump into Kansas here. Where are we at? Um, I like the over in this game. UCF just got. Pummeled by K-State. What was the final there? 77 to 52. Now, what does that mean? Does that really say much about what's going to happen today? Well, I think partially because Kansas, let's be honest, this is a team on another level. It's a team that's athletically and talent-wise on another level than probably all but about five schools, right? They come out, they, they you know, they're really good every single year. Uh, we've seen them put up 89 versus Kentucky. Uh, Lower scoring games they had, uh, ten, Tennessee and UConn. I think they scored sixty-seven and sixty-nine versus. But that this is not that's not UCF. That's this isn't a game where they're going to play down competition. They should sleepwalk to a seventy-five to eighty points themselves. And I just don't see UCF. The, they'll bounce back a little bit. You get embarrassed like that on a road to score fifty. You're going to score a little bit at home. Uh, the the set. This was actually a one forty-three and a half last night. So it's moved a little bit here, which makes me feel good about still liking the over here. And you do, I mean, who have they played? You know, you go through Tennessee, Gonzaga, Wichita, Duke, I mean, UConn or whoever. I mean, Kansas is just going to outplay these guys. Now they have a quote unquote top 10 matchup on deck versus Oklahoma. This isn't a team that just does a look at. They will sleepwalk to a 75, 80 point game. I expect UCF to bounce back after a terrible game. And the seven, I, I think it's a light number. Like, this is a spot where I wouldn't mind saying, hey, I'll lay 10 with a, a Jayhawk squad on a road because I think they're just going to do as they will here. But the shorter number under a 10, again, I have, I have some maybe wacky numbers when it comes to certain teams. But in this spot, I just think Kansas is that much better than UCF, and it shouldn't be close. I think the line's closer to 10. I see seven. I'm thinking, wow, maybe uh, maybe the linesmakers know a little something better here. I think it's a Kansas route, honestly. But they're going to put up the points, and we're going to go over this 144 and a half. All right, Kansas and UCF over 144 and a half. And Mr. I forgot Higgs. to mention Johnny Dawkins. Johnny Dawkins is the, the coach down there at UCF. Johnny Dawkins, yeah, former Duke point oh, guard. Yep, yeah. I was going to bring up. Yeah. I was going to bring up the Sixers with him and Hershey Hawkins and Charles Barkley. That was my nice youth right there. That was a good, yeah, yeah, three headed yeah. monster. The original, the original super team. He was a lefty, as I recall. So. uh uh, yeah, if you he was look pretty at good, this, I like Johnny Dawkins. Oh, yeah, well, I love Johnny Dawkins. Anyway, um, you look at the strength of schedule, which Sean pointed out. Uh, it, UCF has played the 312th it's, most yeah. difficult schedule in the country, which means they basically played a bunch of cream puffs. Uh, and then if you look at their non conference slate, that even goes up higher to 325 in comparison, uh, Kentucky. Um, you have 41st toughest schedule in the country, 59th toughest non-conference slate, and uh, Sean rattled off a lot of the wins they had. The only thing that scares you about the over is uh, Kansas is extremely good uh, in terms of defensive prowess, uh, number eight in uh, defensive efficiency. And uh, UCF, even though they played that week schedule I alluded to, they're right now ranked number 25. Uh, in defensive efficiency, 
Um, so, but the pace of the game should be conducive to getting that number up. So, Jesse, what's your take here? Yeah, I guess uh, I, I don't think Kansas is going to lose any sleep over their next game being against Oklahoma. Uh, they're they're used to uh, getting up for bigger games than that, probably. Um, and for UCF, you know, welcome to the Big Twelve. Can they really compete with the likes of a a top five? Uh, team in the country they haven't they're, they're, they don't have any resume to show us that they they can't um you know every every year they play houston a couple times and houston is a legit you know top 10 top five team most years uh but they lost by 11 at home to houston last year they lost by 14 at home to houston the previous year and if they can't get up for houston they're not going to get up anymore for kansas and uh yeah, the line looks a little short to me. So uh, it, it's got the makings of a double-digit win for Kansas. They're just – they should be just too good. Um, but we'll see how it plays out. Yeah, well, Kansas coming off a uh, nail-biter in their last game, winning by two at home against TCU as an eight-and-a-half-point favorite. Uh, so looking for them to bounce back a little bit there too as well. But, um, yeah, you guys make good points. And like I, I alluded to in the strength of schedule, and both guys touched upon – uh, Kansas definitely has played the better competition, and the line uh, indicates that, too, when they're laying seven and a half on the road. This kid Dickinson, uh, the, the transfer from Michigan, Sean, has really been a, a, a major difference for uh, Kansas. Yeah, I mean, the guy was like a borderline player of the year type guy at, at Michigan. I mean, yeah. he was their whole squad. You see how good Michigan is now? I mean, yeah. I or not good. go to Kansas. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. How good they are, meaning how good they, yeah. how how good are they? Right. You know, I got you. Yeah, and it's and it's come on, it's Kansas. These guys, it's it's a turnstile. Here we go. Just another couple good recruits coming in. We'll see in the uh, final eight, and hopefully, it's our year. I mean, it's it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. All right, so uh, let's get to Jesse's play. Tennessee at Mississippi State. This game goes at 7 p.m. Eastern time, and for those looking to view on TV, it is on the SEC Network. Uh, right now, Tennessee is a two-point road favorite. The total in this game is 139. Pretty good defensive teams here, Jesse. What do you, what do you have for us? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm going to look at the total. Um, you look at Mississippi State. Uh, they're getting a couple points at home, but history is not on their side. Tennessee's won nine of the last 10 head-to-head -head meetings. But the, the interesting part to me is last year at Mississippi State, the last time these two teams played, uh, Tennessee won by a score of 70 to 59. That went over the total because the total was only 123. The total has been under 130 in the last three head-to-head -head meetings. Uh, it's been lower than 139 in each of the last six meetings. Pretty high total for these two teams. If you look at Tennessee's pace of play, they're averaging 72 possessions per game, which is way up from 67.7 last year. But a lot of that probably has to do with they've just come off of a non-conference schedule. Uh, it's easier to play a little looser in non-conference play. Now that we get into the uh, part of conference play, I expect them to tighten things up. And certainly history tells us that these two teams, when they get together, do slow the pace. Uh, Mississippi State's allowing 63 points per game. Tennessee's allowing 64. Uh, I know that when we look at history, people say, well, these teams are different every year, but still the same two head coaches that faced off the last few seasons. So uh, I, I think the style of play will remain the same. And uh, 139 looks, looks like a inflated number to me i'm going to go under 139 yeah i agree with you jess um you know you look at uh, again i love looking at ken palm when it comes to diagnosing totals in uh mississippi state right now is ranked number 10 in the country in defensive efficiency allowing 93.2 points per game per 100 possessions by the opponents um and tennessee is number two in that category so these are two very good defensive teams you also look, you mentioned the, the pace of play. Yes, uh, uh, Tennessee, like a little over 70, I think you said, in terms of offensive possessions. Uh, Ken Palm has them at 70.5 per uh, 100 uh, offensive possessions uh, or per 40 minutes, excuse me. 
Um, and the thing that sticks out to me is how Tennessee is able to slow down opponents. Uh, opponents average 18 seconds per offensive possession against Tennessee, which uh, that's ranks uh, amongst the top third in college basketball in terms of slowing people down. And uh, Mississippi State, on the other hand, uh, their average length of possession is 17.9 seconds, which ranks 251st in terms of how fast they play. So I like this. I like Mississippi State, Tennessee. I agree with Jesse uh, to go under 139 here, uh, Sean. Yeah. Um, how about Mississippi State just as a side anyway here? It's it's two, two and a half. I mean, you look at – we talk about strength of schedule or just teams – who they played because everybody's going to have some cupcakes mixed in. It's just the way these are. You can't just schedule ridiculous schedules. Kansas, Purdue, North Carolina, Wisconsin, all on Tennessee's plate already. And they're sitting at 11 and three. You lose to a couple of good teams. You're still going to be ranked pretty high. Who's the best team Mississippi State beat? I mean, Rutgers, yeah. Northwestern, both on neutrals. I mean, you lost to South Carolina who just uh, got beat up the other day. I mean, North North yet, Texas is an underrated team, but yeah, I, I get. Are your they point. are they in the? Uh, if we're talking they're, the top they're... four, compared to who the other team played, like yeah, oh, no, I, no doubt. The I mean, line you look is at the, two. The yeah, line the is two. The strength of schedule. The strength of schedule. Tennessee's to your owned point, them. Yeah, if you let me finish. I don't want strength. Of, You're a Star Trek guy. Come on, tricky guy. The strength <laughs> of schedule shows. Nanu, uh, nanu. Mississippi State number one thirty two, and um, the other one is Tennessee is seventeenth in the country in terms of strength of schedule. Go ahead, my delusional friend. I'm just saying the lines too. It just looks odd to me. Yeah, it is. Um, but in any event, uh, our official pick on these two games is um, Jesse likes the under one thirty nine in Tennessee and Mississippi State. While Sean likes Kansas and Central Florida to go over 144 and a half. Let me get to my game, and that's uh, UConn at Xavier, 8.30 p.m. Eastern time start on Fox Sports 1. Uh, UConn currently is a four and a half point favorite with the total being 146 and a half. Xavier's coming off a one point loss at Villanova, much to my chagrin because I had Villanova as a free pick last week, and they failed to cover. And uh, because Xavier overcame a nine point deficit in the last 10 minutes uh, and uh, the rally fell short, but they certainly accounted themselves very well. I'm not so sure. And I'm, I'd be interested in hearing both of you guys opinion on this, that Villanova is as good as they were uh, ranked in the preseason or as good as they've been in past years. I just think that's a Villanova club. Uh, you know, again, uh, that has three losses this season just against big five opponents right in the city of Philadelphia. So losing to Drexel, St. Joe's, and Penn. Uh, so uh, I question the, the, how strong Villanova really is. Now, Xavier also, uh, typically and annually, they usually have a very strong home court. Now, they have won their last three at home, but they've also suffered three home losses this year. Nothing to be ashamed of losing to Houston at home but a pair of bad defeats versus Delaware and Oakland. Uh, so something to keep in mind there. This is a, a, I think the difference in this game, guys, uh, a big difference is going to be UConn's ability uh, to uh, get second-chance opportunities. They're number eight in the country in offensive rebounding. Xavier, on the other hand, ranks number 238 in defensive rebounding. So, And uh, also UConn is number 47 in defensive rebounding. So – I, I see a big advantage on the board going to UConn. Uh, UConn also coming off an 88-81 win at Butler. That was a Butler team that was 8-0 at home at that time. They shot 63% in the second half in that game and overcame a seven-point uh, halftime deficit. I think they carry over the momentum uh, right here going into the game at Xavier. I know that Jesse's going to bring this up, so let me bring it up anyway. They're missing uh, – UConn has been without their seven foot, two foot center Donovan Klingen over their last three games, but they still have gone three and all. But he's certainly uh, they're a hell of a lot better team with him in there than without. But I still think UConn gets it done here. Quality wins this year against Texas, North Carolina, St. John's, and Gonzaga. Give me UConn here minus four and a half. I hate laying points on the road, folks. 
but this is one of those rare exceptions. UConn minus four and a half at Xavier. Jesse? I wasn't going to bring that up, Ross, but what I was going to bring <laughs> up is uh, Xavier, Xavier has actually got history on their side. They've, they've played pretty well against uh, UConn, but I can't step in front of UConn here. As you said, uh, UConn's coming off that seven-point win over Butler. To this point in the season, Butler's looked a lot better than Xavier to me. Uh, UConn, 13-2 and two overall. They did lose to Seton Hall. Uh, they lost to Kansas, but by just four points. I believe that was at at Lawrence. Uh, so no shame in that. But they beat Gonzaga, Texas, and North Carolina. Um, no doubt they're the better team. No doubt they can win and cover if they choose to show up. So I'm certainly not about to step in front of them. Sean, what's your take, my man? Well, the Nova team... Yeah, were they just ranked because they're Nova? I mean, they had two returning yeah, starters. So they they had a, right. you know, they also have the. I know it's not that brand new coach, but it's still working a new everything. It's still different. It's not Jay Wright's team. And uh, how about you know UConn also beat Indiana on a neutral, and I think Indiana is comparable or, or better than the Minutemen. Can we just call them the X so we don't affect? We just call them X for for Xavier. <laughs> Um, I I like UConn here. I it's weird though because Xavier they lost to Houston by six. They beat a St. Mary's team, which has kind of had some ups and downs. They have won the last two here, uh, you know, outright over over the Huskies. But I I'm, I think Huskies are a really good team. I you know them Kansas. Yeah. I like Arizona. Like uh, who's the other one? Purdue. Like I think those are like kind of the cream of crop type teams. Uh, I'm 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 with you. I I don't have anything on this game, but I, I would lean I lean UConn as well. All right, UConn minus four and a half over Xavier is uh, my pick, our official pick. Both gentlemen agree. Um, also, Sean Kansas and UCF over one forty four and a half, and Jesse Tennessee Mississippi State under one thirty nine. The man they call the Jewel, Jesse Shul, in uh, Thailand, uh, valuable commodity to us as well. And uh, I, I consider him to be a gem as part of our show. Uh, he's going to put his hat on. He's going to tell us exactly why. You should buy from Jesse the Shul, Jesse the Mule, Jesse the Jewel, Shul. Uh, well, I guess I'm still uh, up there on the leaderboards at gamblersworld.net with college hoops, despite a subpar day yesterday. Looking forward to today. I've got four picks up. I've got three college hoops. I've got an NBA pick. Uh, yeah, we flipped the switch from football to basketball. And at this time of the year, that usually uh, works out quite well for me. So feeling confident and uh, looking forward to an, an NFL playoffs as well as uh, getting into the heart of conference play and college hoops. There you go. Jesse Shule, one of the finest there is, folks. You can find him at our sponsor site, gamblersworld.net. And also you can find at our uh, sponsor site is uh, the gentleman below me. Uh, his name is Sean Higgs. And uh, Sean, tell them exactly why they should invest their hard-earned money in a gentleman like yourself over at gamblersworld.net. Well, why wouldn't you? Obviously, I need some hair products, and I need uh, extra cash for my Star Wars collection. Now, um, hey, uh, college basketball, uh, off to a nice start for the year, 59%. Uh, the last week or so here. I got three back up. You'd like to get down on that. And NBA and NHL, I believe I'm, what, two and three for for NBA and, and hockey on the site. And NFL season, now it's wrapping up. I got, I'll be adding the packages. I got games up already. So listen, uh, anybody on the site's going to take care of you. I just say, you know, if you want me, I'm going to throw out a, more games than, than most. Just got to grind away. It's, you know, coming in and Bet crazy amounts on every single game because, yeah, we're having a nice run right now. So 59% is good in college basketball, but that's 40 games in, in a week. So be prepared to, to ride the lightning, as they say. But uh, I don't know. What's there to say? Just uh, we're all a good group of guys. We win more than we lose. Yep. yep. Do who you like. It's, that's about all we could say. And hit the like button. You mean like one of the, one of the, uh, one of the comments we got was that uh, we flip coins. So. 
Um, yeah. That's fine and dandy, but we win coin flips a hell of a lot more than you win coins. They're gold flips, coins. So. Should I should I get the yeah. gold coins out of my safe to trade some nice gold coins that we flip at, at twenty one hundred dollars yeah. a pop? That's a coin that's flip. It. That's the one. That's the one. And uh, myself, uh, number one at the site overall. Been that way for a long time now. Not to not to say that the guys behind me are any worse or any better. Okay, it's just to say that I've been on a nice run since the site started in mid July. Um, and going back to August fourth, two forty one and one seventy eight overall. That's fifty eight percent. My dime betters, uh, people betting a thousand dollars a game with those picks, up forty four thousand seven hundred folks. I don't know what you make uh, annually for a living, uh, but I could say that that definitely will add to your surplus income on an annual basis. All you need to do is just invest with me, my college basketball, 21 and 11 uh, over my last 32. That's this season a 51 and 33 run going back to last year, which is 61 percent. Um, again, number one in college basketball at the site right now. And my MBA is doing awfully well. If you go back to August, uh, or excuse me, April 11th of last year, I'm hitting 59% of my MBA picks. And that includes a red hot 58 and 30 with my MBA sides, uh, which is good for 65%. You can get me uh, again at gamblersworld.net along with Sean and Jesse at gamblersworld.net. And why should you buy from me? Because I just bought a brand new Genesis, folks, and shelled out. $55,000 and uh, you, you got to help me replenish that fund because that's all money I made gambling over the last sports betting over the last six months. And uh, I need to make another purchase in another six months. No, I'm only kidding folks. Yeah. You need to purchase for me because I have a winning scooter. record a and, and I, uh, a very good winning record and I'm going to make you money. Jesse, there's a like button right underneath us. Uh, we, the folks need to know what to do with it. Smash it! Smash that like button. Or you can just tap it. Whatever you prefer, folks. Just a small token of your appreciation for the time, work, and effort that we put in uh, to bringing you a quality podcast uh, each and every day and also to make you a smarter sports better today than you were yesterday. These two gentlemen will be back with me on Friday. Um, and at that particular moment in time, it's going to be a live show, by the way, at 3 p.m. Eastern time. You want to put that in your calendar. Gives you the opportunity to chime in with all your comments and questions. And also, we're going to be giving out uh, our NFL Super Bowl winners with the, the money line odds. And, and we may even have two of them, each of us, you know, one one uh, sleeper and one team we think is going to win it all. So uh, look forward to that and also to hear your opinions on who you like to win the Super Bowl and at what odds. And uh, until then, for Jesse Shul, Sean Higgs, and Ross Benjamin, we'd like to wish each and every one of you all the very best. Take care and God bless, folks.